Hello friends, it's good to be back with you on my video blog. It's been a while. I um, had the fundraiser the week before last and then spring break with my son home didn't leave me a lot of time to do, well, really much of anything besides the essentials. So this will be the first video blog or vlog in a while and I'm excited about that. I want to talk a little bit about the story from the gospel uh, where Jesus is talking to the people about the uh, folks that whose blood Pilate mixed with the sacrifices. And this is a rather graphic image. And as was pointed out to me yesterday in Sunday school, we don't really have a record of this happening, but assuming it did, we do have a record of Pilate being very cruel. So assuming it did, it's a very graphic image. And, uh, and Jesus makes a weird turn. Jesus says, do you think these people were worse sinners than... Uh, anyone else basically and do you think the people who the tower of siloam fell on were worse off than any of you and uh basically and he says no i tell you the truth if you unless you repent you will die uh just as as these did and maybe in a different manner but uh, repentant is the key to uh, to not dying. And I think when you first look at this response from Jesus, as I said, it can seem very cruel. But what I think Jesus is trying to say here is everything that we think is extraordinary or is really worthy of note or even is common and incidental and not worth notice everything is noticed by god <clears throat> and human life whether in flourishing or tragedy is just as consequential and uh, just as under God's purview. And when we talk about repentance, it doesn't necessarily mean repenting and gro or uh, groveling and begging for forgiveness for your sins, although that can definitely be a part of repentance. Repentance simply is turning and noticing that God is there and turning and noticing that Christ is active. Repentance is a turning, a turning towards God. So Jesus is saying that turning towards God makes the difference. Making a daily choice to focus on God lifts you from um, your circumstances of suffering or of daily drudgery or magnifies your moments of joy and triumph. And then we have the discussion of the fig tree in the back half of this story. And I think what's interesting about the fig tree is you get the parable and the the landowner is like, cut it down. It's not producing any fruit. And then the, the gardener comes along and says, let me put manure around it one more year. Let me fertilize it one more year. And then if you want to cut it down, cut it down. If it doesn't produce fruit after I do that. And in my, in my way of thinking, this is God saying, I will continue to give you opportunities to be tended by me and fed by me and produce fruit 
as you are called to do and as I'm giving you the opportunities to do, but not to be cruel or sadistic, but God is also saying, I will not wait forever. I will accomplish the arc of justice or the arc of history, which is bent towards justice. So if we don't act and if we don't repent and constantly turn towards God, we are go God is going to act through different means. So this is a very complex piece of scripture or can seem very complex, but really it's uh really rather straightforward. Everything, be it great or suffering or joyous or suffering, is under the vision of God. And God is constantly tending us and giving us opportunities to act. But God's arc of history tends towards justice. And God isn't one to wait forever, which gives me courage to move and continue to move forward. I hope it gives you courage to do the big things this week and the small things this week. Thanks, guys. Lots of love. Find us at thejulianway.org. See about our work. Support our ministry. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.